So before we even start discussing how good curses are, I know a whole bunch of you are going to ask me, hey, Iron, where's the gameplay? So here's a couple seconds of gameplay. If you want to see even more gameplay of this and comparisons of exactly how much curse effectiveness has an impact on monsters, then feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'm going to be messing around with this occultist over the next couple of days, and hopefully I'll come out with some more gameplay footage at the end of some testing. Hopefully I have satisfied your ravenous hunger for some gameplay footage, and with that aside, let's jump into the video discussion for today. Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and today we are asking the question, how good are curses in Delirium League in patch 3.10 for Path of Exile? As we are a little over halfway over the league, it's about that time where we start messing around with the non-meta mechanics and start asking questions about how good on a wide scale of effects and mechanics are cluster jewels and how they impact the game which was present in Path of Exile and the power levels which was present prior to the release of Cluster Jewels. So we're going to take a look today and see, and it's going to be quite shocking uh, to see exactly numerically how big of a power jump Curses got in 3.10. Now, normally, prior to Cluster Jewels becoming available, if you were just looking to stack Effect of Curses, you would go to, of course, the Passive Tree and then to Ascendancies. On the Passive Tree, you can go grab Skittering Runes, which gives you 15% increased effect of your curses, along with a Minor Notable that's down near it for 5% increased effect of your curses. Then a Hexmaster, another 5% increased effect of your curses, with another Minor Notable of 5% increased. Then Cursed Concoction, which gives you a conditional 10% increased effect of your curses if you've spent 200 total mana recently, which recently for this purpose of this notable is four seconds. Then there are some other minor increased effect of your curses near Whispers of Doom, the major notable on the tree that's up near the Witch Tree, and those both give you 5% each. That's the total available minor and major nodes that will give you increased effect of your curses on the regular passive tree. So when you add all of these up, you come to a grand total of 50% increased effect with 200 total mana spent recently, or 40% total increased curse effect without cursed concoction. So in other words, if you don't wanna to have to rely on spending 200 mana over the course of the last four seconds, you can get 40% reliably on the passive tree, or 50% if you're willing to devote enough mana over the course of recent four second usage. So on the base tree, you can get 40 conditional 50%. And then on your ascendancy tree, if you pick a Scion Occultist, you'll get a 10% increased effect of your curses, which is ho-hum. I mean, 10% out of what would normally be 40% just as a flat availability on the regular passive tree is about a, what, 25% increase power of the level of your curses. So that's something that's mentionable, but really it's not broken or overpowered. It's relatively balanced. Then when you look at the Occultist, you've got some minor nodes right before Profane Bloom that give you 5% increased effect of your curses, another minor node before Malediction, which gives you 5% increased effect of your curses, and a major node, Malediction itself, which gives you 15% increased effect of your curses. This means when you're choosing your Ascendancy, if you just want the maximum increased effect of your curses and you're looking at nothing else, then obviously the Scion is worse than the Occultist because there's a 15% difference here in terms of the increased effect of your curses. And 15% is nothing to sneeze at when we're talking about some relatively low numbers overall for what's available on the base passive tree and on Ascendancy tree. And now we come to the demon at hand, Delirium Cluster Jewels. Okay, so of course, we all know these things are broken for stacking auras and for guardian meta. We also know that they're incredibly powerful for other stacking mechanisms like stacking war cries or even stacking crit multi on your specters, which is what some of us who have been playing summoners have been doing this league. But then what do they do for curses and how effective can they be specifically in comparison with previous available levels of power? So let's take a look. First off, you can add Dark Discord onto a medium cluster jewel that will give you 10% increased effect of your curses. You can combine this with Forbidden Words, which gives 5% increased effect of your curses. Whispers of Death, which also is 5% increased effect of your curses. All of these are available on medium jewels. Lastly, the added small passive skills grant 5% increased effect of your curses 
on the style of medium joules. In other words, the small passives give as much power just to increase effective curses, to mention nothing else of the other bonuses that those particular medium joule nodes and skill effects would give you. They give you the same effect, the same power level effect of your curses are on the small passive nodes as with the major nodes that you're looking for on medium delirium cluster joules. So this means that between two medium cluster jewels with four passives each, you can achieve 40% increased effect of your curses. Do you remember what we said earlier as we were looking at passive tree power? The total amount of passive tree power that was unconditional was 40% effect of your curses. This is what you can get on the passive tree without conditions. This is 15% greater increased effect than the occultist ascendancy, which is already another 15% better than the scion ascendant version of the occultist. In other words, delirium cluster jewels for increasing the effect of your curses is simply bomb. Bonkers when compared with previous available levels of power for boosting your effective curses. Let me put it in no uncertain terms for those of you that are just scratching your head and wondering, maybe this is too many numbers thrown at you all at the same time. What we can get on Delirium Cluster Jewels now, if we stack enough of them, is actually going to end up being more increased effective curses than what we previously had on our Ascendancy and on the Total Passive Tree combined. So let's calculate a hypothetical total here. Let's say that we take the Occultist Ascendancy, which gives us 25% increased effect of our curses. That's from the Minor Node before Proflame Bloom, the Minor Node before Malediction, and the Major Node Malediction itself. Then we go on to the Passive Tree. We're just gonna take the 40% because we don't wanna have to worry about any sort of conditional effects and spending mana. So we'll just grab the 40% that's available. We'll grab Skittering Runes for 15% increased effect of Curses, Minor Node, which gives us 5% increased, the Notable Hexmaster, which gives us 5% increased effect of Curses, along with the Minor Node, 5% increased, and then the Notable Cursed Concoction, if we want that conditional 10%, and then the Minor Node before that, on Whispers of Doom, 5% increased effect of your curses, and the second one that's right before Whispers of Doom, 5% increased effect of your curses. This totals up to 40%. Then we start adding in some cluster jewels. Now again, this is just with the hypothetical scenario of adding in two medium cluster jewels. That doesn't require you to have a voices, it just requires you to have a large jewel that has two sockets. Incredibly dirt cheap, this league. Two medium jewels with dark discourse and Whispers of Death, and one small passive added, which gives you 5% there. That total curse effectiveness adds up to 25, 40, 40, which equals 105% curse effectiveness from the new available power nodes on a dirt cheap budget that isn't even min-maxing. It's not even coming close to min-maxing. We're not even using voices yet. We're just using a single large cluster jewel to stack two medium jewels, let alone starting to use voices in multiple different spots on the tree to see exactly how effective our curses can be. Now here's a quick POB example of a passive tree that I've been messing around with over the last couple of days and will probably continue to mess around with because this sort of tinkering has been absolutely fascinating to me. You can see that we've gone and allocated skittering runes and applied that to our amulet in order to give ourselves that 15% increased effect of curses. We do lose out on a 5% minor node that's near that simply because we don't wanna use our passives uh, to travel all the way down to grab that. It's just a ton of passives to go grab 5%. In fact, you can actually notice on this particular passive tree that I've got pulled up, which is now using two unique voices, which are seven passive voices, so they're the cheapest voices out there. We are not even grabbing the 5% minor notables that are on the way towards Whispers of Doom. Instead, what we are doing is we are grabbing as much energy from naught as possible. Those are on our small cluster jewels. And then we're simply trying to stack Dark Discourse and Whispers of Death in as many places as possible. Possible to stack our curse effectiveness. For this hypothetical example, take a look. This is using the same tree that we just showed off a moment ago, using temporal chains with a blasphemy aura effect. That's how we would use it for this particular example. You can see that with all of this stacked increased effect of curses, we get our curse effect mod up to 3.05 
on the modifier scale. This is simply ridiculous. Now, it does require a bit of investment. You can see that we do have the temporal chains increased effect lab enchant on our helmet. You can see that we're using voices. You can see that we're stacking as much curse effect as we can on the tree, but this is where it all pays off. Since Curse Effect mod in POB starts off as times one, you can see that we are going up by a whole additional 2.05 times on the Curse Effect mod for POB's calculation purposes. That is simply ridiculous. That's saying that just based on the cluster jewels that have become available during Delirium League, that curses and their curse effect power has more than doubled in its availability to what was previously available prior to Delirium Jewel being released. Now, what you won't see here today in this discussion is a video of me standing next to Shaper showing him never moving or simply not being able to cast. A whole bunch of monsters inside Path of Exile have a minimum amount of action speed, a threshold that they can hit. So in other words, you can reduce their action speed down to that minimum, but they cannot be reduced below that minimum. So while certain ailment based builds like stun builds or even like freeze builds or chill builds can reduce that action speed or even prevent it altogether from going off because of a status effect or a status ailment, in this particular way, stacking curse effect on temp chains won't make it so that way Shaper or Cirrus or Uber Elder won't be able to move at all, but it will mean that they're moving essentially an ESPN highlights slow motion speed. So that's just me messing around with temp chains, but what about other curses and how effective they could be? Well, let's take a look. A lot of builds want to take advantage of elemental damage, and so of course generic elemental weakness is going to be helpful in this regard. Elemental weakness gives cursed enemies have minus 0.25% to elemental resistances per 1% quality on the gem, along with cursed enemies have minus 20 all the way up to 39% to elemental resistances. Now, you can either self-cast this, or of course, you can use it via Blasphemy support to cast it as an aura, depending on how you'd like to use this particular curse, as is true for all cursed gems. Some of you may be aware of the way how resistances work and why negative resistances are important. Some of you might not be. So here's a quick recap or summary from the wiki. This curse can cause resistances values to dip into the negative if the base values are low enough. This will have the effect of increasing the damage above values listed on the character screen. For example, if a monster has 0% elemental resistances by default, as well as 100% curse effectiveness, which we have way more than that on our particular character, and is inflicted with level 1 elemental weakness, that monster now has negative 20 elemental resistances. Consequently, the monster thus receives 20% more elemental damage than the spell or attack would normally cause. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you can curse stuff, reduce their resistances to negative, which then acts as a more multiplier. The curse gets even more effective against monsters with higher resistances. However, a boss such as the Shaper has 66% less curse effectiveness. Thus, for the overall calculation, it is needed to take both the monster resistances and the curse effectiveness into account. The extra damage that is then dealt is multiplicative with other damage modifiers as it is considered to be the monster's damage mitigation and not due to a buff on the player's elemental skills damage. So in other words, elemental weakness in and of itself can act as a massive more multiplier if you're able to actually push monsters' elemental resistances into the negative, which by boosting your curse effectiveness is something that we are now able to achieve quite easily for many monsters. Of course, there are always exceptions, like the Shaper, like the Uber Elder, and like Cirrus, depending on their particular percent of less curse effectiveness against them. So we talked about elemental weakness, which is, of course, generic reduction of elemental resistances. But then, of course, there are three particular curses that are used for focusing resistances against particular types of elemental damage. Of course, they are flammability, frostbite, and conductivity. They all pretty much work similar to one another, so we're just going to take a look at conductivity for right now. Conductivity grants shocks on curse enemies have 1% increased duration per 1% quality on the gem and then also grants cursed enemies have minus 25 to 44% to lightning resistance and cursed enemies have plus 10 to 14% chance to be shocked by lightning damage. 
Now, if you can apply more than one curse at a time, which as soon as you take Malediction on the Occultist, you can. It allows you to apply, apply an additional curse. That means you can apply two curses simultaneously. You could, if you wanted to, apply both Elemental Weakness and Conductivity to reduce all Elemental Resistances at level 1 off of Elemental Weakness by 20%, and then at level 1 from Conductivity, it would reduce Lightning Resistance by another further 25%. So between Elemental Weakness and conductivity, you've now pushed something that would have normally had just 0% lightning resistance down to negative 45% lightning resistance, which is all going to act as a more multiplier for your lightning damage that you're hitting with. Not everybody likes elemental damage though, and so of course there's despair, which is the curse that's applicable for dealing chaos damage and damage over time. Despair grants per 1% quality, cursed enemies take 0.5% increased damage from damage over time effects. It also grants cursed enemies have negative 20 to 29% chaos resistance. Then also cursed enemies take 15 to 25% increased damage from damage over time effects. Note that this means that if you have got a dot effect that is operating that's not chaos, that line will actually apply to you, whether or not you're igniting something, whether or not you've got a cold area degen going on, whatever it is that is a dot effect, that will be applied regardless if it is chaos damage or not for your despair. On top of that, it also adds flat chaos damage to hits against the cursed enemies. There's one line that we particularly care about here for a build that is playing as an occultist. Cursed enemies have minus X to chaos resistance. The reduction of chaos resistance granted by this curse after modifiers stacks additively with the occultist void beacon ascendancy passive, which grants us a whole bunch of negative resistances for chaos resistance to nearby enemies. Since we are playing as an occultist, we do care about reduction to chaos resistance since for our particular build, most of the damage that we're going to deal is going to be chaos based. This means that while we're using the occultist void beacon, which is minus 20 to nearby chaos resistance of monsters, despair stacks on top of that. So just like elemental weakness and conductivity both work together when dealing lightning damage, here the occultist void beacon and despair both work together when we're dealing chaos damage. Lastly, we'll take a look at Enfeeble, which is a fantastic defensive curse that is available. This is what Enfeeble does. Per 1% quality, cursed enemies have 0.2% reduced accuracy rating, and cursed enemies have 0.5% reduced critical strike chance. That's just on its own based off of the quality of the gem. Those are stats that are great in and of themselves, reduced accuracy and reduced critical strike chance. But on top of that, there are some very juicy flat bonuses that will again get increased via our various increased effective curses, including cursed enemies have 10 to 19% reduced accuracy rating, cursed enemies have 25% reduced critical strike chance, cursed normal or magic enemies deal 21 to 30% less damage. Cursed enemies have minus 21 to 30% to crit strike multiplier. And lastly, cursed rare or unique enemies deal 10 to 15% less damage. Again, because we are increasing the effect of all of our curses across the board, Enfeeble's power levels are absolutely ridiculous. Whether it's applying to rare, unique, magic, or normal enemies, it doesn't matter. They're simply going to hit a lot less hard because we're going to be using Enfeeble. Now, Enfeeble is capped at 75% for its effects, but that is very, very desirable to hit because it means that enemies are going to be hitting us that much less powerfully. It means our character is essentially boosting its own tankiness, and if we're playing as a support, all of our buddies in our party's tankiness because the enemies that we are cursing with Enfeeble simply deal less damage. If you're playing a build or a play style, if you're pushing for level 100, for example, or if you're playing in hardcore, for example, and you don't want to lose a character, Enfeeble with alongside a bunch of increased curse effect is going to be massive for whenever you do take a big hit or for whenever you do accidentally not see something that sneaks up on you and tries to kill you or one-shot you. Reducing the amount of damage that is coming in is absolutely massive for survivability. And because we're stacking so much increased effect of curses, we are able to push that damage way, way lower than what it normally would be. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I look forward to all of your comments down below to let me know, correct me on any errors. I'm sure I've made lots of them here today. And of course, share your ideas about how you're using 
curses and thinking about them in 3.10. I myself, I'm going to keep messing around with curses and keep tinkering with this particular build. At the moment, I'm kind of at a crossroads deciding whether or not I can actually include any kind of damage in my build for a solo play style, or if I just want to go all out for party play and just make this a curse bossing effect monster. So that's where I'm at in my own journey. But let us know where you're at in your journey in 3.10 as you're thinking about curses and how you can use Delirium Cluster Jewels to abuse the heck out of all of these amazing curses that are available to us in 3.10. Thanks once again so much for watching, and I hope today is the day as you're cursing whatever it is you're cursing, a Mirror of Galandra will drop for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.